The corrosion of metals causes tremendous costs to human society. The World Corrosion Organization estimates the worldwide annual costs to 2.2 trillion US dollars, which corresponds to about 3% of the world's total gross domestic product. When a metal surface is exposed to an electrolyte solution, the solution of the metal takes place at one side and the position of the oxidized metal takes place at the other sides. This process causes a flux of ions through the water and a flux of electrons through the metal. That is, the formation of a negatively charged cathode and a positively charged anode takes place. The electric field caused by this flux of charged species can be detected spatially by scanning a tiny oscillating electrode above the metal surface. This technique is called scanning vibrational electrode technique, abbreviated as SVET. Here you can see the quantitative results of a SVET measurement. The measurement is carried out above a metal surface with a protective barrier coating. In the photographs below, you can see the surface which has been scratched for the experiment. Thus, we study the corrosion process over time as a result of damage to the coating. The spatial distribution of the electric field can be seen in the three-dimensional diagrams above. We can see how, with time, the electric polarization of the, above the surface takes place. So, just quickly to recapitulate what has happened in our experiment. The metal surface was coated with a polymer film. This film was mechanically damaged by scratching. As a result, our metal surface is now exposed to the salt solution, causing it to corrode. When this process now continues for a long time, it will lead to the growth of the scratch by corrosion. This can lead to a detachment of the protective coating around the scratch, a process called delamination. We want to prevent this delamination. Therefore, our idea is to dope the coating with tiny capsules which contain a corrosion inhibitor. Scratching such a coating will still lead to corrosion at the beginning. However, the release of the inhibitors from our capsules will form a passivation film on the damaged side of the coating and will ideally stop corrosion completely. So let me tell you about a specific example that I have been working on. The metal I used is aluminum. The pitting corrosion of aluminum leads to the formation of aluminum ions. These ions can form a molecular chelate complex with our corrosion inhibitor hydroxyquinoline. The complex is not water soluble and precipitates on the surface of the aluminum. The resulting precipitate forms a protective layer on the surface which is impermeable to corrosive species and can eventually stop corrosion. We fabricate particle stabilized inhibitor filled capsules and transfer them into a barrier coating on top of an aluminum surface. Our capsules should be easy to manufacture and inexpensive. To do so, we make use of multifunctional molecules. We want to be able to control the size of our capsules. This is important because the thickness of a barrier coating can range from hundreds of nanometers up to hundreds of micrometers, and our capsules should also fit into the thin coatings. We believe that the future of coatings are environmentally friendly waterborne coatings. Thus, we focus on this particular type of coating. Last but not least, we want to demonstrate alternatives to cancer causing corrosion, corrosion inhibitors like hexavalent chromates. Thus, we use less problematic organic corrosion inhibitors. So, let's first speak of how to make capsules. We start with water and oil. In the water we have suspended negatively charged silicon dioxide nanoparticles. The oil is the monomer styrene and contains a large amount of corrosion inhibitor molecules which are shown as the small black dots in the cartoon. Our corrosion inhibitor is poorly soluble at neutral pH value. However, decreasing the pH value causes the inhibitor molecules to become positively charged and to dissolve partially into the water. The inhibitor now adsorbs on the surface of the nanoparticles. As a result, the nanoparticles become interfacially active and start to attach themselves to the oil-water interface. Now we only have to emulsify the oil-water mixture to obtain nanoparticle stabilized oil droplets. The last step is to solidify the droplets by polymerization, which leads to the formation of mechanically robust inhibitor-filled caps. 
Here you can see electron micrographs of the capsules we have manufactured by our method. We actually used ultrasound to make very small capsules. The capsules are covered with a dense crust of silicon dioxide nanoparticles. You can also see that the size of the capsules can be well adjusted. We do that by changing the amount of silicon dioxide nanoparticles. The smallest capsules we could obtain were only 200 nanometers in diameter. In the next step we transfer these capsules into a waterborne organic coating. It is important that our capsules are uniformly distributed in the coating and not aggregated. Using confocal scanning laser microscopy I could show that this is the case, as you can see in these vertical profiles and the other perspectives of the capsule doped coatings. Last but not least, of course, we have to demonstrate that the coatings doped with our capsules have improved anti-corrosive properties. First we measure the electrochemical impedance of the undamaged coatings. If you are not familiar with this technique, our simple protective coating on the metal surface can be seen as an insulator or an electric resistance above the metal. In the three-dimensional plot below you can see how the electric resistivity of the coating evolves with time. The larger these semicircles are, the higher is the electric resistance of the coating. For coatings with and without containers, the resistance grows with time. This is probably because after applying the coating onto the metal surface, it still undergoes internal rearrangements and cross-linking reactions that make it more impermeable. Interestingly, when we dope the coating with our corrosion inhibitor filled capsules, as you can see from the green semicircles, the resistance grows more over time than for the bare coatings. This might be because the inhibitor action leads to an additional sealing of pores in the coating. Then we have studied whether our capsule doped coatings can reduce the local corrosion rate in a scratch. We have done this with a scanning vibrational electrode technique. You can see that the electric field resulting from corrosion in the scratch is significantly smaller with the presence of our capsules in the coating. However, we could not completely inhibit the corrosion, but future work on the basis of this system might help to develop a real self-pacifying coating.